strangulation. And we will simply wait. They are willing to wait a hundred years for you to wither and die on the vine. Do you're waiting for them to show up with the cattle cars. That's not what's going to happen this time. What's going to happen this time is a hundred year plan so that when their great grandchildren come of age, they're just looking around like the Aborigines, people with the Aborigines today, where were all the blacks? I guess they all got up and left on their own. They used to be here, but there were no cattle cars, there were no gas chambers, so you can't blame us because they're not here anymore. That's the way it's going to happen. A guilt-free form of annihilation. Now, if you think you're going to survive making excuses, then get up and walk out now because you just wasted $20 equivalent of the United States money. You might as well get up and leave now. You have got a room full of hundreds, literally hundreds of people that you can work with and network with right now. Hundreds of people. If you get dropped off in a room full of hundreds of black people, specifically for the purposes of building an economy and you can't do it, you no longer deserve to survive. That's the bottom line. You don't deserve to continue to live. Now, if you still have excuses and if you can't find at least three other serious people in that room, then black folk need to be removed from London. You're not serving any purpose. <laughs> Now, you don't have a choice in this, is the last part. It's not like this is optional. In the 21st century, the haves are annihilating the have-nots. Now, if you don't really believe that, get up and leave. If you really believe it, then the age of excuses is over. And what the brother asked me, he said, what is your profession? And we can't get any hands to go up? That means that you have not even started the process of attempting to begin to be in the system. If you don't like accounting, there's engineering, there's computer science, you don't have an excuse. But to a person who just simply is not going to do anything, he'll make an excuse. And if he can't make one, he'll call 10 people and see if he can borrow an excuse. <laughs> the age of excuses is over. Get it done. Get started living or get started dying. But you all, your parents sold you out. They should have been building an economy a hundred years ago, and they didn't do it. They didn't do it in London anymore. They did it here in America. And now here you are in the worst dire circumstances you've ever been in with a police state that is more efficient and more ruthless than anything we've ever seen. London has more cameras than any other city on earth. It is impossible for you to sneak around at this point. So if you can't come together to save your own lives, if you're not willing to do for your children what was not done for you, if you still got excuses in 2015 after what you just witnessed, and understand the situation in London is no different than it is in America, right. it's no different. You got the dollies and the police over there killing black folk with impunity like they're doing over here. Plain and simple. If this isn't enough for you, the game is over in London. And whichever ones of you got some sense in that room, get the hell up and leave the country. It's done. Single one of you right now. 
and tell me where is your black television station to report it. If they march in there and arrest every single one of you and march you off, is the BEC going to report it tonight? Tell me. Who's going to even tell them you're gone? Who's even going to say it? If that thought right there alone is not enough to frighten you into motivation, then simply put, nothing will. Hi, brothers and sisters. Uh, my name is Phil. Um, I was speaking to certain people where I work or where I work today. Day, brother. I was trying to get <laughs> I think today is, is a learning uh, experience for everybody here. We are the chosen people. We've got to get to know ourselves. We have to really believe in ourselves because I do not understand when people say racism. There's, no, there's racism every day. History is every day. You know, religion can't teach us that. We have to teach ourselves. We have to understand that we are people. All we do is fight one another. We are all today. We are together. The great Marcus Garvey said, "I quote: Black people must put themselves back against the wall." We have to know ourselves. And today, you two, brilliant, fantastic. You should applaud these people because you are the chosen ones. I know my stuff. And I suppose everybody here knows this stuff too, too. But we have to get together. It is time. 2005, stay alive. Excuse people. Where should I go if the people around me are not building? Well, I guess I'll just sit here and die. I don't care if you go to Taipei. I don't care if you go to Timbuktu. I don't care if you go to Never Neverland. You go to a place where black people are building, and if there are no black people building in that place, you be the one who is. But don't you stay in a place where people have resigned themselves to perish. I would rather see you get on a slow boat to China than to stay in London and wither on the vine with everyone else. So the answer to your question is, pick a spot. Spin a globe and pick a place. But don't stay in a place where the people have resigned themselves to die. And there's one other thing I want to throw in here. Thank you very much for inviting the females here. Ladies, the men are the chief builders in a society. The men are, not you. I know that's going to offend a lot of people, especially after I played Madam C.J. Walker. The men are the chief builders in a society. And taking a look at the circumstances in London right now, it is clear your chief builders ain't building nothing. <laughs> so there's a reason for that. <laughs> you are aiding and abetting them. Because if a man can get you in the bed and he ain't built nothing, you are the problem. <laughs> Baby mamas from Sea to Shining Sea in America? Oh, yeah, and in London, too, as a matter of fact. So what does that tell me? That tells me plenty of non-builders are being rewarded with a woman's body. A man who isn't building shouldn't be able to get two slow loaves of bread to slap together, much less a female. Don't you let somebody sit up here and try to guilt trip you into accepting his dusty, broke lifestyle, saying, if you are a man who's actually building something, that you're a gold digger. That term is dead. You know why? Because the first requirement of calling a woman a gold digger is you have to be a man with some gold to dig. Stop letting them sit up here and reverse psychology you into accepting a state of poverty. Because let me tell you, I don't have any kids. But if I did, I wish my child would bring home some broke Negro talking about, well, we're in love. 
I will know how you're going to take care of my child and our progeny. She is carrying my bloodline, and I will be damned if my bloodline is going to have a lesser life than I had. Hi, Jason. Greetings from Zambia via London. Um, Life first, sir. Thank you. Uh, my question is, do you really think that we can build economically in a land that is not ours? Oh, please. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> it, I, I ask that because, like, for, for example... Um, I got one word answer that, Jews. <laughs> you show me one place on this planet where four Jews get together and they don't own everything. Show it to me. Show it to me. They don't make that excuse. You know why? Because they had the cattle cars come for them once and they are not looking for the cattle cars to come back for them. <laughs> so they don't make those excuses because they understand that if they accept poverty, it really will be annihilation. We haven't gotten the memo even after the plantations. That's the difference. As black people, you are supposed to own wherever your feet touch ground. Hello? Hello. 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 subject to whatever they want to do. Please tell me, what is the difference between being a black man walking in San Quentin and a black man walking in Birmingham if the, when the police show up? What's the difference? Tell me what rights you have that he doesn't have. I'd like to hear it. Okay, thank you. That answers that. Now, as far as change is concerned, understand some people. Now, you all, when we say football over here, you understand it's slightly different than over there, but because you all have to play football with the feet, which is a novel concept. But in any case, understand something. You understand team. Manchester United, you understand team. But you all also understand something else that we understand, whether it's football, there's carrying the hand of football, playing with the feet. We understand that if we got a bad player on the team, it's not going to be very long that we tolerate the coach and the GM accepting that situation. And if we have a coach who does not know how to win, it's not going to be very long if we accept that situation. Well, understand, all of you are the coaches and the general manager of your life. And every person that you have around you, that you associate with, that is your team. Now, you keep choosing bad teams. Ladies, you got three babies by four goons. You have to keep choosing the loser after loser. You are the coach and the GM. So if the people around you are not winners, if the people around you are not MVPs, your first priority is to get some MBEs. That's your first priority. Now tell me how many times Manchester United will be able to say, well, we just can't get any good players, David. That was all we can. We just can't get any. Tell me how long that would fly. Thank you. So it doesn't work for them, and it's not, and you have even less excuse. Because you get your bars a lot lower than theirs are. They actually get a skilled athlete who spent decades learning his craft. All you have to do is find somebody with half a bit of desire. 
But when I got a room full of hundreds of black folk, and not one of you is a skilled carpenter, not one of you is a skilled plumber, not one of you is a skilled electrician, that tells me that your preachers, your pastors, your politicians, and your parents have lied to all of you all your lives. And you're playing a tremendous game of catch-up now in the fourth quarter with people gunning for you now, saying, where do I find the people to work with? Why? Because most of you are happy being poor. You're, you're willing to accept it. If they'll just get me a little niche out here in the slave quarters, I'll be okay. Money isn't everything. <laughs> Money can't buy happiness while you're all sitting there tweeting away on your cell phone and your internet service was paid for with nothing but money. It's very interesting. Nobody needs money until their life is on the line. Now it becomes all-encompassing. We have to stop being childish about this. Let's start being adults. The previous generations weren't. It's up to you now. It's do or die time. If the person standing next to you is not ready to fight, get someone who is, but there's no excuse for not replacing a bad player. Yeah, uh, I believe some of us are like young professionals. So what I want to say is basically, is there anyone with ideas or looking for investors or looking to create a platform to do something together? Because I think that's more relevant than giving philosophies. So if you want some, if you want to do something, let me know. <laughs> Because you got hundreds of people in that room. Do you all understand that if you were all uh, three or four hundred white people, the first thing you all would be doing is addressing your deficiencies. That's sports. If you got bad players on the team, you replace them with somebody who's got good players. Well, you're your only player on your team. So what are your deficiencies? I see a bunch of unskilled laborers in that room. People who are hoping to be able to fill out an application to enter the economic system, which is what filling out an application does. That's the bottom rung of the economic ladder. What are you all doing to become skilled laborers in fields that you need? Once you become a skilled laborer, now you can become an employer. It's a hop, skip, and a jump from there. It takes no effort at all. If, you, if everybody in that room who didn't raise their hands, oops, that's all of you. If everybody in that room who didn't raise their hands were to invest the next six months into learning something as simple as computer programming, in six months, we would have 400 people who would be able to take over pretty much every website that's out there. I'm not talking about in a hijack kind of way. I'm talking about being able to build bigger and better. Because everybody's on their Facebook and their Twitter, but how many of you could program it? And you don't like some of the functionality. Yeah, but guess what? Mark Zuckerberg has people who know Perl, programming language. How many of you even know what Perl is? But you'll complain about it. You can, we complain about the telecom to the United States. Who's making an alternative to it? You guys are going to complain about the illegals. You got, you got a problem with that like we do over here. What's your alternative to it? An unskilled laborer can do nothing but complain. That's all he can do. So if you all would invest, I'm not even asking you to invest money anymore. If you don't, if you can just invest the next six months of your time, to stop this cycle of being an unskilled person, that would change everything oh, no, I, just before 100 people in that Thank you for that contribution. Uh, Jay, I have two questions. Uh, my first question is, what are your beliefs or your thoughts on franchising? Uh, I want to know what your opinion is on that. And the second I had was, um, typically, looking at the statistics over there, black women, um, I don't know, African American or whatever, black women typically are at the bottom of the scale financially, but in terms of education, we normally come up quite high on the criteria. So there's a, there's a disconnect in the sense that a lot of us go to university, get qualifications, but I think a lot of that gets sucked into child rearing, for example, and you find yourself out of the market with all the qualifications which you have. Uh, Keeping it short, my question is this. If you are able to secure, I don't know, 10 women who also have the same vision as you uh, and they're willing to invest financially, but you find that the amount you have is not enough, what are your thoughts on seeking outside investment and what would you say would be a safe percentage and from whom in order to move a business idea forward? Because I think pulling together is really important. But financially, if you cannot come up with, let's say, the required amount, who would you, what would be your advice on seeking outside investment? Thank you. 
Okay. First of all, I don't want to hear any black person anywhere on this planet say that they don't have enough capital. I stopped taking that as an excuse five years ago. When we got Negroes lined up, 50 abreast for the new Jordans anywhere in the world, or for Xbox games, or their PlayStation games, and you got the same thing going on over there in Britain. And when I saw that, I don't want to hear it. There was your business money right there. There was your investment money. Black women spend just as much money on their hair in London as they do in America. <laughs> Let's just keep it all the way real. I don't want to hear any more excuses. You got the money. What you do not have is the will to use it for what you need. You want to go to work for the things you want and then beg for the capital that you need. Now, that's called not being an asshole. So I, I, I will not hear that one at all, period. As far as getting together with other investors, that would be something that you would have to align on your own. I was able to do it for 7 a.m. But like I say, it takes either a good idea or a good amount of people. So be prepared to invest either one of those and get ready for an answer you might not like. But as far as investors, yes, there's nothing wrong with that. As far as franchising, that doesn't matter. As long as you own the building, I mean, here, and, and, and you can build a hotel, you like Holiday Inn, the way they're doing it, take that sign down, Marriott. And it's simple, it doesn't matter. As long as the building is yours, you can do whatever you want to with it. And when you get tired of playing around with them, pull up your own. It doesn't matter. The franchising is perfectly fine, no problem with that. Be prepared to spend some money, though, because a good franchise will not be cheap. Now, to your last question, well, your second to last question, do you all notice that I didn't use the word education in my film? Dr. Anderson has a degree, Umar Johnson, myself, but did you notice that none of us told you all to get an education? Did you notice we didn't do that? Oh, yeah, we touched on the subject, but you notice I didn't say that. And the reason I didn't is because there is a difference between education and intelligence. I want you to get knowledge necessary to make money, a skill set. Remember, I said become skilled laborers. I didn't say educated laborers. Skill. Once you have the knowledge necessary to apply it, understand some people, a business is very simply put, the art of solving problems. You solve somebody else's problem and you charge him as much money for solving his problem as you can. Because if he could do it himself, he'd be doing it himself. But since he doesn't know, you get to charge him for fixing it for him. That is the root of being a business owner. But if you're unskilled, you can't solve your own problems, much less somebody else's. So no wonder. And the problem with people getting degrees is that, as Dr. Anderson explained in the movie, all you can, since you have no black companies, all you can really do is take your money and lend to other people's power. All you can do is lend your strength to their cause. You don't have any place you can apply it for yourself. And what happens to most black people is we get into a company and our goal is not to make a business. Our goal is to try to get in middle management so we can get a BMW. So we walk in the door with no plan. We're having children with no plan. Thus, you have a society with no plan, no clue, and no hope. And if you're out here having children first and getting an education second, what's going to happen to your income as it goes up? You're just going to start plowing off into the kids even more. We keep going into these things backwards. We need to have a plan first, execute the plan, and everything else follow that. But in the meantime, don't go to school to get a degree for education. You're supposed to be getting a job to enter the economic system so you can start building your own assets. Not so you can buy some shiny shoes and a shiny car. Brother, Brother Jason, did you get that?
Um, I heard um, most of what you said there, but um, for the part that I did make out, we as a people, since we are not having the proper family structure, we're not building the proper society structure. Women are not teaching their daughters what kind of man they're supposed to be with, and the fathers are not teaching their sons what kind of man he's supposed to be. So you've got an organized group of non-black people who are starting their economic base in their homes, and you got black folks trying to wing it with all these improvised, quote-unquote, families. Let me break your feelings here tonight, tonight, folks. A family starts with a man and a woman, not a woman and a child. And if you can't build a family, I would be a fool to think you can build a business. If you can't organize the people under your roof, how are you going to organize a bunch of strangers? Answer, you won't. You can't. You don't know how. And thus the situation that you're in. So as black people, one of the chief things we need to get straight is all of this craziness that we have going on and disorganization. Everybody wants to do their own thing. What I want to see come out of this group of you hundreds of people the other day is an agenda class. I want to see leaders come out of that place. Stop looking around for other leaders. The leader is you. If you're hearing me right now, you are the leader. It's not about being an elitist. Although you are the elite, and stop getting people to say that you're not. Yes, you are. You are the elite. You are the special forces. You are the commandos. You are the best of the best. You are supposed to be leading. And first and foremost, that means that you also understand that as leaders, there's supposed to be punishment when people break the code. And what you lack in London, because understand, the situation for black people around the world is the same. It's, it's no different over here than it is for you all. You just got different accents. That's all. I can drop you all off in Louisiana today, and once you get done with the fried food and the spices, you'll be like, yo, this is just like London the way black folk act over here. <laughs> they just talk with a southern drawl. But it's no, the circumstances are no different. No different. So you lack an agenda class. Who in that room is setting an agenda? And once you set the agenda, you need the means to enforce it. The reason why you all are so worried about, well, I can't put nothing together because other black folk won't join up with it. If six of you would get something going and just start a damn shopping plaza, you would be able to call hands and dictate to everybody else in the neighborhood and start enforcing a code. That's what everybody else does to you. They build a big store and then they enforce the code, the dress code, the, 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 the entry code. You can't come on this property code. It starts there. If just six of you would get together and do that, you can start making a code and then start enforcing it. But everybody's waiting for somebody else to do it. And waiting on somebody else, you end up with no one else doing it. Brother Jason, we have totally run out of time here, but we're going to be um, in touch with you because uh, this is something that we have to do um, on, on a regular basis. Brother Wayne just got a few words to say to you quickly. Uh, how you doing, Jason? Hey, one people. Black first, Wayne. That, that, he's, Wayne has been with me since the very start of the Black Channel. Um, if you don't know about our Black Channel radio broadcast online, so uh, big ups to Wayne. All right, Jason. I'm not going to keep the microphone. I just want to ask you a question. Do you plan on showing this documentary again? Because I think there's a lot of people that wanted to come, but I couldn't make it for whatever reason. And I've got friends in Birmingham as well that also want to see it. But obviously this is only one place in London and there's a lot more of us. So do you plan on screening this again? Well, if Charmaine wants to show it again, we oh, can yeah, definitely do that. Hell, hell, hell yeah, brother! <laughs> <laughs> that was my yes, interest in some other places, but definitely, um, like I say, if anybody <coughs> wants to contact us about screening it, they definitely can contact us. And um, especially for the overseas places, I really want to work with them to make sure this gets out. And we're even planning on screening it in Africa here in a couple of weeks. So, definitely. Yeah. Okay, so some people in South Africa was interested in hearing. So, that's a little clue. Anyone that's a film, film developer or something like that, that's your first film you can do right there. Yeah. So, Brother Jason, what I was going to say to you is, um, we're going to be in touch with you shortly to, to work this stuff out because um, there's a lot of people in here that had hands up and we couldn't get to them. And... Um, uh, we're going to put together something where we can all gather in a room and have a proper discussion, a proper. Uh, sorry. We're going to bring.
screwed him over, most definitely. I, 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 I'm saying that like I've agreed with him, and he's going to cuss me off and I said, yeah, I ain't coming up. No, I'm, bro I'm joking. Brother Jason, we're definitely going to sit down and talk about you coming over. We're going to do some seminars and stuff like that because the information you have is valid, it's needed, and we're going to take you on a level. Um, people, give Brother Jason a big round of applause. the 21st century to mark a difference and a turning point because we were all diverted half a millennia ago. In the 21st century, there are no black Londoners. There are no black Americans. There are no black South Americans. We are all Africans, whether we are Africans in America or Africans in America. We are Africans. Let's build. Definitely. So give them another round of applause, brothers and sisters. On the way out, there will be people with cameras asking questions. I want you to give your views on the cameras, box, box, as much information as possible. We're going to make this work. I'm going to lift the last word from my wife. Yes, and please continue to support blackhistorystudies.com. Please keep supporting us, keep supporting the elements in the room. Um, also, um, oh, yeah, please keep supporting us, keep supporting. I'm going to say this, keep supporting all nights at the back.